gentlemen, Ralph's Automotive. I'm doing a little bit of a quick one today. Uh, I got a 2007 GMC Sierra, not vehicle, uh, not engine dependent, of course. Uh, uh, take a look at the camera there. You uh, may or may not have an idea what we're doing here. I'm taking the wheels off of it. Uh, customer wants a camber camber kit put in it. Uh, a specialty off-road camber kit. Uh, don't know if it does anything or not. It's not neither here or there. You know, we get paid to put it in, so we're going to put it in. But anyway, uh, we're also doing and the reason I didn't finish that sentence. We're also doing a wheel bearing. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not at all saying that that is the cause of it, but well, that helps it along, I guarantee you that. And uh, you're gonna put a cheap wheel bearing back in it uh, with a setup like that. You know, these things here, they look cool as but, uh, oh, I'm gonna have to edit that out. But anyway, uh, they look cool, but you know, it, it takes a toll on the wheel bearing generally so but I'm gonna bring you all along we we'll want to do that uh, get that camera up in there and get get a light here in just a second uh, well matter of fact let me get you around here uh, get a light so we can see so of course the adjustment part of it is is right in here there's your bolt at cam bolt here's the actual slotted washer deal that actually adjusts it you also see it on this side right here I hope you can anyway and what we're gonna replace it with we've got us some whoa whoa we got us some bolts here and this is a dirt king kit and that's what that looks like so these here actually got the holes they uh, uh, made to not uh, come out as easily the idea behind it is that's supposed to help uh, hold the adjustment in place I think that they don't do much but that's neither here nor there like I said uh, customer wants them in and we're gonna put them in it's that simple so uh, bring you along and we'll get started I don't want to mess the alignment completely up on this thing so uh, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, some jacks underneath it so we can pry a little bit and uh, get it safe but after that uh, I'm going to tear right into it and we'll go ahead and do this do this job I figured well might as well make a video of it it's, it is kind of kind of somewhat interesting I guess something a little bit different so here we go so first things first I'll take a few seconds and get that ABS wire out of the way so we don't end up ripping that get that loosened up like I said we don't want to end up ripping the wire I'm also going to take uh, the brake line the brake hose loose is it anything that we can do to get things out of our way done a whole heck of a lot of stuff on the floor in my day and I can tell you it's not gonna lie that's been a long long time ago but uh, you know it's hard hard for me to tell you how long something it's going to take because uh, at the end of the day 
when you when you're out on the floor, you know, and you don't don't have the tools necessarily, all that good stuff. You know, I realize uh, stuff's going to take a little bit longer. A lot of times, uh, you know, I, I it's been a long long time, and I can't tell you it's going to take you this long. It's going to take you that long. I just not not going to be able to do that. No, at the end of the day, a lot of people that choose to get something like that done because uh, when you have uh, lifts and all that good stuff, it's just a lot easier to do this kind of work. Alright, I'll flex that a little bit. So I'm perfectly good with that. Now we got some freedom here. So 21. I'm going to go ahead and mark that up a little bit so I don't completely lose it. Better we'll have to get a grinder after that. Yes, those things are hard. Of course, we got to have a little bit of air con uh, compressor action. Get my body out of the way. So, well, I think we, I think y'all can see. And this is basically why I removed the clip from the brake line, brake hose, brake line and brake hose actually because that's the junction. You know, time wise, uh, like I said, we can't really make that call, but uh, I can tell you that's uh, uh, out in the driveway or maybe in the garage on on a jack you know you might be looking you may be looking at a at a Saturday afternoon I don't know be matching these up in a little bit that's why I marked them you know you recall these same pieces from the other side this one here actually seems loose uh, this one here is the one that's that's bound so they're not all gonna just slip out obviously since there's weight hanging on it
These little tangs right here, they actually still in there. So. Which is a good thing because we only got three of them. Now, <clears throat> they don't exactly match up, but what, basically what, what amounts to here, we'll unmark the hole. In this case here, I'm going to use the third hole. The, the, the alignment will have to be done afterwards. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make a remark. I'm not saying uh, you shouldn't be doing this, but uh, the alignment shop, uh, they see this and they have to they have to get a let me back up on that I started out wrong on that every time that a shop has a modification to a vehicle you know and you got to do extra work like taking hubs off that normally that normally not there you know all of this is chargeable time guys so keep in mind when you do these modifications if you're gonna uh, bail into the alignment shop and they're going to do your alignment and this is what they're going to find under it uh, don't be surprised that the uh, $50 alignment all of a sudden costs you $100 because they got to do extra work you know to, to set all this because on especially on these here this will ha all have to be taken loose and then they got to twist it over you know and, and whatever they got to do they got to pry it or whatever they got to do to to make this happen here and then they got to put it into the pins, you know. Ordinarily, all you do is loosen this up. It's a cam bolt, and you just roll it, and that adjusts everything. On these here, there is no cam. There is no camming. There is no flat spot. No camming. It's just a it's just a round hole, round bolt. That's all that is. So don't be surprised if you see additional charges on an alignment. Just a just a fair warning. I'm not trying to lecture anybody or whatever, but uh, just keep that in mind. You know, don't get mad at the shops for charging more than what a what a standard alignment is because you making these modifications. You know, uh, goes without saying. I gotta spend more time. You gonna pay more money. Whoops! Almost forgot to turn the camera back on, guys. Didn't mean to. Anyway, uh, this one here, the arm never moved. Uh, the marking didn't work out quite like it should, doesn't matter. Like I said, the arm here on this side, it never moved, so I'm uh, fairly confident on on where I'm at with my position. I just went ahead and stuck it back in the pins. Uh, won't call that a day because, uh, like I said, I know this arm has never moved from its original position, so uh, we're, we're pretty good. This case here, they want you to uh, tighten it to about 100 foot pounds. Click, click. Just kidding, but uh, we're not too worried about it because of uh, the fact that we have to get an alignment done. So, in a nutshell, uh, this is how you do those. Like I said, these were put where they where they fall in, so they're only going to line up in one area. Uh, I'm not going to film. The other one, it's the same thing, other than it's on the other side. You know, I'm not going to go ahead and film it because it, it's be, it'd be redundant. I've got to do uh, one more on the other side. The customer did one one actually yesterday. They might have figured out uh, how that kind of sucks on the 
uh, on the floor to do them. I don't know what happened there, but anyway, they wanted us to finish them. So, uh, like I said, I thought it was kind of interesting, so I'm sure I wanted to show it. So there you go. That's that's how you put them in. You know, like I said, paperwork talks about marking them, and I did, and I tried that out, and there's no way that was lining up because uh, uh, the reason I know that that we're good on this side. Well, I don't know if we're good, but at least this side never did move when we took it out. It, it never changed the changed the location. So uh, we went exactly where it was at in in the first place. You know, and who knows that may be right. Uh, you know, they might go to Lyman Shop. They they do uh, cast a swing and all that good stuff and decide. Well, that's good. You know, we don't know. Uh, don't care at this point in time. Like I said, it's got to go to the Lyman Shop anyway. So anyway. I'm going to turn the camera off. I will turn the camera back on because, like I said, we're going to do the, the wheel hub, bearing, whatever you call it, on the other side. So I will turn the camera back on as soon as I get around the other side. One more thing I'm going to show you. This thing right here is called the machinist wedge. When you're installing these little pegs I showed you, uh, get my noggin out of the way, these stewies right here. Uh, and, on this side here we had one missing so I had to put another one in it uh, what I do always always worked for me on on this particular style uh, what I did here is I hooked my little fall my little chain fall I hooked it up and pulled uh, pulled the arm up so I can I can uh, get the new pin started and what I did here is I generally drive a machinist wedge uh, in in here to hold the back side of it and that pushes the sheet metal out some and after that what I do is I use a long chisel come in sideways wham bam thank you ma'am I'll uh, let me grab that wedge out of there and I need to move the camera back a little bit because it's kind of right in front of me let me pull this out So this is the tool that I use. A lot of people pull the A-arms out to do that kind of repair and well I shouldn't have said that. A lot of people just don't repair them. But right there you go guys. That is perfectly flush and all it. We got it in there. So now our tabs uh, can be locked in. Alright, just thought I'd turn the camera on for that and show you all that. There's my setup. Here's my little chain full and see how that pulled it up now it kind of pulls the arm in the way that's how it's got to sit when it's all said and done so uh, there you go guys I figured uh, I'll show you that I use the heck out of that little chain fall I got me one of them here at Harbor Freight I figured I'd try it no more than what they cost and I've been using the fire out of it and it's been it's been a great tool a lot of help you know, uh, of course a ratchet strap does the same thing. You know, anything you can strap, don't even have to be a ratchet strap, regular strap, you know, because you can you can lift this out of the way, you know. But anyway, all that together will replace the pin. So hopefully that air is not gonna be a problem with the audio. I got the door open today, happens to be a cooler day. It's been freaking hot. No, so, I still got everything here loose as far as the. Uh, I had to drop the shock out in this one here. I found on the bottom, I found the bolt uh, that was seized up and also not tight. It was just jingling around in there. So uh, that shock's been loose for some time. The other side wasn't tight either. Uh, I had to drop it down because there was no way to get the bolt out otherwise. Uh, you can put them the other the other way around, but uh, we don't really want to do that. Factory, you know, they're that away. They're they're going from inside out, so that's how I put them back. You know, you got to do what you got to do. You just take your time and and do what you have to do. But uh, we're ready to take the whole uh, saddle off of here. I'm going to give that brake a little bit of a wiggle. Get these L pads here a little bit of a wiggle. There you go, good enough. All I'm doing here is uh, getting uh, 
getting a little bit of clearance so we can pull the, the whole assembly out of here, the whole saddle. 18 mil. Eighteen mil for the saddle bolts, like I said. I hang that up here, of course. Uh, without an impact, I personally wouldn't even attempt it, but it can be done, of course, naturally. Uh, 36 millimeter on the axle nut. I'm fairly certain that is a standard number. Oh, that's got a screw in here. That's boogered up. I hope we can get that loose. This one happens to be a Torx. That one there is a T30. This one here, no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's going to break the socket, and no doubt in my mind. I can tell by how tight this thing is, I have to get a ratchet on that, get more feel. But I can tell you already, this one here is going to be a socket eater. If you don't do something with it. I'll beat the crap out of it with a punch. And that loosen it up for us. And of course, we've got to try to remove the wheel speed sensor. Wow, they got wire nuts on this one here. I mean, that's never going to work. Well, actually, I don't know if it did. does or doesn't. Oh, no, it's got a wheel speed sensor in it. I was wrong. Sorry about that. I was wrong about that. We do have the wheel speed sensor, so... I was in air this time. Also got mud everywhere too. It's already out of the bracket over here. I remember that now. I've seen that all ago. 
So here, of course, we've got the uh, plastic clip that also comes with the new one. A lot of times these clips end up breaking, but I'm going to tell you a little trick. If you happen to get one apart and they still look halfway decent, hang on to them. You'll be able to use that later on. If you accidentally break something or whatever, uh, you have a backup there. So, GM, I dare say it, in this climate here, remove three bolts in the back of it. They should slide out. I do say should slide out. I have yet, I've done a ton of these things and I have yet to use a slide hammer, but always a good time for the first time. <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't have said that. I'll probably be paying for it. Generally, I don't even have to put lube on here, you know. But now that I set that, I'm gonna go ahead and spray them a little bit, just in case. Sorry about my body being in the way here. Oh, look at that. Had to actually get the torch out a while ago and snip them two bolts in the shock down here, snip them off. We put these uh, these strut assemblies in the Chevrolet little tip. Uh, of course, there's the three nuts on top of it. Uh, that has to stay loose. Well, they'll have to stay loose, but it's a lot easier to, to leave them loose and get everything buckled up, tighten everything up together. Just a quick tip if anybody is planning on doing it. A lot of times that makes things a whole lot easier because what happens is when you lift up on the vehicle and the arms go down, it binds the it binds the uh, strut assembly. Obviously, because you don't got no pressure on it, and uh, when you leave all the bolts loose, that aids in installing them. Have to get a six point socket on this one here if I can. Oh, 
had the bracket loose. It started to round on me. I didn't want to go ahead and round it off. This one here, pretty obvious. You hear it clicking. Of course, spray some uh, fluid film, anything, you know, anything, any kind of oil like that. Spray the crap out of it, so, in hopes to prevent some rust. This is a different type of oil that I just used. It's uh, basically similar to the fluid film. I like fluid film. Um, this is my go-to stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over. I said, guys, generally I use the fluid film. That is the best stuff that I know of. There's other options, I know that. This ain't about that. Torque the spec. <sighs> so, the rest of that we're going to do later on. Just put that uh, first clip in. No more clicking. Axle nut back on. Okay. 
you know, wind yourself up on the not properly torquing, I can guarantee you it's really close. Got more than enough of them to know how tight is tight, you know. I'm not going to sit here wail around on it with an impact, as you've seen. Go ahead and spray our hub assembler here. Spray it with fluid film. Prevents the rust, rust under the rotor. Oh, whizzed on this uh, rotor here a little bit while ago. Took some of crap off of it. That part right there, no, it does not have to be tight at all, at all, and I mean that. There's no reason for that bolt right there to be tight, or real, real tight. Doesn't even have to be real tight. I mean, it just barely touching, it'll hold a rotor in place, that's, that's what that's designed to do. Can't back out, doesn't matter if it did. I know that a lot of times people get themselves wound up over every little detail. That's those naysayers that uh, end up giving thumbs down for no reason whatsoever. Not that that bothers me, but I'm just saying. Shouldn't have to, I'm gonna say, say it anyway. Put your two 18 millimeter headed bolts back in. So all this part here is back together. Uh, at this point in time, of course, we can go ahead and remove our clip over here. My little screwdriver. try to not twist the ABS wire all that much you know try to keep it to where it's not twisted make sure she's plugged in pretty good now this little guy has got a, a pin and a Christmas tree so you line them up and just shove them down don't be shoving down and not having it lined up and break it off right away. So anyway, at this point in time, like I said before, I got all of this here loose. My cam bolts are in. Everything on, on this, this end here is done. So I've got to tighten up some bolts up top on the bottom. I'm not gonna leave the camera running. Thanks guys for watching. Comment. Uh, if you must leave a thumb down, at least be man enough to say why, uh, what it is. Uh, tell me what it is that you think I've done wrong. Tell me what it is that you would have done different and we'll talk about it. You know, if you're coming in there just leaving a thumbs down for no reason at all, you know, uh, 
I don't know what to tell you. You know, get a life. Thanks for watching, guys.